Christ the Lord is risen today, Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high, Alleluia. Sing ye hands and earth reply, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we gather on this day to come before the Lord our God and to offer him this worship and the sacrifice of the Mass, as well as our own sacrifices of prayer and praise and thanksgiving. The Church rejoices on this day in the memory of Pope St. Pius V. As we make ready to enter into this mystery of God's love for us, let us first call to mind our own sins, our weaknesses, and our failures, asking God for his forgiveness and trusting in his mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, let us feel your compassion more readily during these days, when by your gift we have known it more fully so that those you have freed from the darkness of error may cling more firmly to the teachings of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, Get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, that is the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, Go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shear is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who will tell us of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this? About himself or someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with the scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop, 
And Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water, and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip came to Azotus and went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Bless our God, you peoples. Loudly sound his praise. He has given life to our souls and has not let our feet slip. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. When I appear to him in words, Praise was on the tip of my tongue. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Blessed be God who refused me not my prayer or his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all taught be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it, and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We hear in our first reading today the uh, episode uh, in the Acts of the Apostles when the Apostle Philip, uh, obeying and inspired by the Holy Spirit dwelling within him, uh, encounters and ultimately baptizes uh, a court official from Ethiopia. I think it's important to note a couple very small, subtle things about this. And in noting them, to contrast them with what I think goes as sort of our own mm, culture, 
or mindset today. Philip receives two specific instructions. The angel of the Lord tells him to go south on the road to Gaza, the desert route. And he does. And when he sees the Ethiopian official in his chariot, the Holy Spirit says, go and join with that chariot. Those are the two instructions that Philip receives. And he proceeds to fulfill what he has been instructed to do. I think what's important to point out here is what Philip is not told, which is, from our point of view as 21st century Americans, most of what we would like to know. If we are receiving instructions to go and do something, we like a lot of instruction. We like a lot of detail. We want to know that what we are doing is, in fact, what we've been asked to do. And we want to know why we're doing it, and we want to know why that's important. And we want to know a lot. We want to know a lot. Philip received two instructions. Go south to Gaza on the desert route and join that chariot. And that is not unusual throughout not only the Acts of the Apostles, not only the Gospel, not, but the entirety of Scripture. Go and do these things without a whole lot in the way of further information and further instruction. We will come later in this Easter season to another poignant and similar scenario when Saul, who has persecuted the church, is blinded. And the Lord speaks to one of the faithful members of his church and says to him, go help Saul. Or indeed, in the Gospels, when St. Joseph receives his instructions, always from the angel of the Lord, take Mary into your home, flee to Egypt, it's safe to return. So too, hear Philip again. Go south on the road. Okay, I'll go south on the road. Go join that chariot. All right, I'll join that chariot. And without everything that we think is necessary for accomplishing the task, God's will is done. Having given Philip a minimum of instruction, Philip relies on the Holy Spirit dwelling within him, which he knows dwells within him, and his faith in the Lord to simply do what comes to him to do in the moment. Now, the immediate result certainly is the salvation of this court official. The fruit that has come from that conversion, it is hard for us to say. Although we know that the Christian church in Ethiopia is amongst the most ancient of the churches in the world, 
among the first to have been established after the events of Pentecost Sunday. How many were then preached to and converted by this official? Perhaps even unto the entire nation, the entire people. We don't know. And when we think of what God has instructed Philip to do, it may well be better. The less we know, the better. Because more often than not, doesn't it seem that the more we know about something, the more intense we can be about it, and the more anxious and the more nervous. For instance, if the Holy Spirit or the angel of the Lord had said to Philip, now you're going to convert this man who in turn is going to convert his entire people to me. Don't screw it up. That might have led to a different outcome. Knowing the weight of our actions and our choices leads to a different outcome. But when it begins, go south on the road and join that chariot. I can do that. Philip can do that, and he does it. That is why it's so important for us to attune our spiritual sense of hearing to the indwelling Holy Spirit, because he, in fact, does tell us what to do. He informs us of the will of God when we listen to him. And we, in turn, must also learn to be satisfied with not knowing everything. I remember once, a very, very, very long time ago, in prayer, begging the Lord to just tell me what you want. Tell me what you want, and I will go do it. Which I don't think is that uncommon a phenomenon for us to want to know what God wants of us and to ask for an answer. I received an answer to that prayer, and in a moment of great clarity and great humility, I realized that if the Lord were to tell me the end, what he wants me to do, the big picture, that I would probably just go straight to that point and miss all the things between the beginning and the end that he has in mind for me to do. We have already been given the end of the story. Christ is triumphant over sin and death and will, at the end of all things, consummate his reign and put an end to all that is evil and all that is sorrowful and all that is harmful and all that is painful. We know the end of the story. That is the end to which we go. What we are given in the meantime, and for our own good, is merely one step after another. We are not privileged to know the root that we are to take between here and there. And I think the reason why God has made it thus for us is because in our own infinite wisdom, we would look at the map that God has planned out for us and say, oh God, I know a better way to get there. It's much more direct. It's much more efficient. It'll save a lot of time if I go this way.
That is why the word of God is described as a lamp for our feet. That we may be guided step by step along the path that he, in his truly infinite and perfect wisdom, has laid out for us, which we would probably mess up if we knew the entirety of that route. However, we have, like Philip, been equipped. We have been equipped with and by the Holy Spirit to take each step as it comes to us. And we have all the assurances of faith that if we do take each step as it comes to us, not only will we reach the end of our pilgrimage, the house, the kingdom, and the reign of God, but between here and there we shall have accomplished what he has in mind for us. And while we would rather know everything that there is to know ahead of time, God knows that it is far better for us and for those we encounter to go day by day, step by step, simple instruction after simple instruction. Planting a seed which will grow as God wills, even to the conversion and salvation of the nations. Go down the road. Join the chariot. Let me take care of the rest. And then at the end, we, like Philip and like all those who have followed the will of the Lord, will see the greatness that has come from such simple acts of obedience and faith. And the souls that the Lord has been able to win for himself because we were able to do something so small, something that the world might think of as insignificant. But that God thinks of as the most important thing to tell us in the moment. My brothers and sisters, let us now stand before that throne of grace and offer to our loving Heavenly Father our prayers, our needs, and our concerns. We pray through the intercession of St. Philip the Deacon for the courage to answer our Lord's call, to be willing to sit and explain the Word of God, and to take time not only with His Word, but with his people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our farmers, those who feed our nation, and the difficulties that they will be undergoing as the food chain has been disrupted. May there be insight, and may the word of God feed them and all of us who are in decision-making positions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for our community, that as we continue to be separated, that we'll be fed by the word of God until we can be fed by his body and blood again. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are traveling, like the Ethiopian eunuch, that they may be protected, 
that they may be open to the word of God and that by their travels that they will endure the travel to our heavenly homeland. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the repose of the soul of Glenn Clothier, the intention of this Mass. We pray as well for the repose of the soul of Walter Hernandez, buried at our cemetery yesterday. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all the prayers on our parish prayer chain, our parish book of intentions. We pray fervently this day for Tina, the sister of Linda Bryan, and her very difficult diagnosis. And for those prayers that we bring in the silence of our hearts. And we pray for all of those who have lost their jobs. We pray for those who are underemployed. And we pray for all business owners having to make difficult decisions at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, who in your providence raised up Pope St. Pius V in your church, that the faith might be safeguarded and more fitting worship be offered to you. Grant through his intercession that we may participate in your mysteries with lively faith and fruitful charity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. And blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, Grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, 
at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sunt celi et terra, gloria tua. Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini. Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the default, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. <coughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Pope St. Pius V, St. Philip the Deacon, St. Peter, St. James, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ died for all, that those who live may live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and is risen. Alleluia. Amen.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Resurrection, see good day.